maybe. Uh, Mrs. Batista, if you're on, if you can just hit record, I, I can't seem to make it. Record. Yeah, I just, uh, it's recording right now. Thank you. Um, so we are going to be recording this so we can post it later. Um, and so as you are asking questions and things like that, um, just know that this is going to be uh, posted and shared later with our community. So if you have questions that you don't want posted, um, you can reach out to me uh, personally. Um, let's see here. There we go. So as you can see here, I'm Mr. Hewlett. I'm the Director of Student Support. I formerly worked as the Secondary Director here at Amplus Academy. Uh, with the new changes and, and the new uh, friends that we've brought in to help run the school on the academic side of things, I've been able to kind of step into what is actually my role and my profession, which is a social worker. Uh, I have uh, 10 years of experience as a licensed social worker at my uh, minor in my degree as a social worker uh, is, in, is in marriage and family therapy. Um, I have 20 years of management experience and I'm really excited to be able to, to manage this team of professionals and we'll kind of go through each one of our, our members of our team, which we're uniquely lucky to have every one of them as part of that team. Mr. Najibi is a school social worker. Um, we're glad to have him recently join our team. Um, he is, has experience in uh, school social work in California uh, and then uh, in social services here in Nevada. So he's been a wealth of knowledge when it comes to helping some of our families that have been struggling financially and looking for resources here uh, to kind of get through uh, the social services side of things as well. Um, he will be starting some groups and so, so some social emotional groups upcoming and uh, we're really looking to add uh, to what to our offerings as a social um, and a and social emotional uh, services with our school. Part of our team also are our secondary counselors. Uh, Mrs. An Angie Sanchez, who has been with Amplus Academy. Uh, I think this is going into her third year or we're halfway through her third year. We're grateful to have her as part of our team. She's a mom of students at our school and provides a great perspective. For her secondary students, she is the counselor for students with the last names A through L. Mrs. Tanya Lisa Smythe uh, recently joined us this year. Um, she's a counselor that was formerly working at Coronado High School, one of our highest performing high schools in the state of Nevada and Southern Nevada in particular. Um, we're grateful to have the wealth of knowledge that she brings with her. Uh, she also formerly worked as a teacher, so she provides uh, perspective with that and her years of experience uh, in a, with, as a counselor um, have been have, have, have just added to our great team. Uh, for those secondary families, if your last names are M through Z, she is the specific counselor for those students. In our elementary side, our student support team, uh, Mrs. Latoya Baber, is our kindergarten through third grade uh, student support person. Uh, we're grateful to have her as part of our team. She was uh, formerly a teacher at Amplus Academy, at American Preparatory Academy, when we were formerly known as that. Um, and she did a great job. We're glad, glad to have her on our team. Um, she also is going to be doing some working with students specifically and just really is a supportive to our whole team over there at uh, the Rainbow Campus. Here back on Durango again this year, uh, Mrs. Bell. I think for those of you that have been around for any time at all, know Mrs. Bell quite well. She has a gregarious uh, and um, loud personality that we love very much. So hopefully she's on there. I'm sure she's yelling at me behind her screen right now for saying that. Uh, but we're grateful to have her as part of our team to provide a, a perspective that she can bring as a mom uh, of, of older students here at the school. And as somebody who's been with us for six years, I think Mrs. Baber has been with us for six years as well. Does that sound right, Mrs. Baber? I can actually see you on the screen. Yeah, there she is. So I'm uh, glad to have her. Also on our team, our AIM team. Um, we uh, used to have a used to have a team that was called our character development team, our ambassador team, um, and we've kind of upped our game a little bit. Our AIM team is our archers in the making. Um, this amazing uh, group of of individuals has been uh, integral in helping us with our transition from um, online to to hybrid to um, the different kinds of things that we're doing with our our monthly awards, uh, and they've been amazing. They're feverishly writing curriculum for our Ingenium program for next year, uh, which means that we're going to have a, an amazing uh, new learning opportunity. Mrs. Ken Mackenzie Cox uh, recently is, is finishing up her degree in family studies, um, and we're excited to have her be of our, part of our team. Ms. Sophie Scaletta, uh, our other member of our AIM team, um, just recently got her degree in psychology uh, and brings a wealth of knowledge. She worked at uh, her university at the Southern Utah, Utah University. Um, in the student programs there. So she ran camps and things like that. So she's bringing a, a great perspective on what students have to look forward to when they head on to college. And she's helping to write into our Ingenium program, our, our new character development program, uh, the different things that are gonna help students prepare uh, heading into college and, and preparing them for those things. 
we have an amazing team uh, with various backgrounds and, and various uh, as, as humans and as professionals. And every single one of them has been so important in this very, very stressful year. As you can imagine, uh, the stresses that you're, you're handling in your own homes with one, two, or seven kids or whatever it ultimately is, uh, that, that uh, on a campus that we're servicing over 2,500 students and about, uh, about 16 or 1,700 families. Um, we, we've, we've been able to feel those things along with you. And this team has been amazing in helping us kind of um, bridge some of those gaps and, and, and be of assistance. You may have heard if your students have missed any uh, school this uh, year for a week or so, uh, you probably would have heard from one of these team members who called just to check in to make sure things were going well. Any one of these people are people that you can reach out to uh, for assistance, and uh, we're always looking to help out in any way that we can. Um, so let's just jump right into it. Um, we have quite a few things that we want to get through tonight, uh, and we're going to end the evening with a, an interview with a, a student who will be providing a professional opinion on, on how to help students in all the student things. Uh, but first and foremost, I just kind of want to go through some, some tips for navigating the virtual learning environment. Um, as of right now, if your student is part of one of the cohorts, uh, in fact, if they're a student at Amplis Academy, they're doing something online and doing some sort of virtual learning. Uh, so the hope here is uh, just to kind of provide some tips and tricks that we've heard and learned uh, over the last year. Uh, it was March 15th last year when the governor made the announcement that we're going to go on a two-week pause. And so we have a, a year of experience of trying to figure this out together. Um, and so we're hoping that these are just some things that can kind of help smooth things out and, and help you at home as you kind of navigate these things. The first and, and biggest thing, and you'll probably hear me say this at least 17 times tonight, if I can get a, a somebody like making uh, the countings on that, that would be great. But um, this is the, the biggest point. If you take nothing home from this uh, tonight, please take this home. And this is the number one and most important thing. Nobody knows how to COVID. The last time that there was a global pandemic was in the 19, early 1900s. And I don't think that we have anybody as part of our community who was a parent during that time. Um, we definitely don't have anybody as part of our community that was a teacher during that time or an administrator or a kid or uh, anything. And definitely not anybody who uh, lived during that time knew anything about computers or anything like that. So the reality is, is that everything that we're doing as far as parents, as far as kids, as far as, far as educators, everything that we've been doing is new to every single one of us. Um, and so as we go through each one of these things, I hope that we all remember to have some grace with one another uh, as kids to parents and parents to kids and, and parents to educators and, and the list goes on and on um, that we're all kind of making this up together. And I think that there was a solidarity, especially in March of last year, when we all kind of got thrown into this together and we all kind of just went through it together. But then we had some shifts over the year um, and uh, expectations changed from parents to students. And uh, so just, just as a reminder that, that nobody knows how to do this. I will also add that nobody knows how to come out of a global pandemic uh, and nobody knows how to COVID that way. Um, and as we're kind of trending that way, where we're hoping that these vaccines are working and that we're lowering our numbers and things like that, we're really, really hoping uh, that we can learn together and again, have some grace and patience with each other as we come out of the pandemic. It's not going to end like that. Uh, Thanos isn't there to snap his fingers and end the pandemic. I wish that he were, um, but the reality is, is that uh, I don't think that the Avengers are time traveling right now to make this go backwards. And so uh, we're, we're gonna have to come out of this together. And so um, the biggest thing I think that, that I can give for tips of navigating any of this stuff um, is to be patient with one another and to, to work together um, to the end of, of making sure it works. The next thing I would say, and we're gonna get into the real meat of it, as your students are preparing to have any online work, uh, we request and, and um, suggest that students have a quiet workspace um, that's not in their bedroom. Typically, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty safe place because it's very quiet and they can close the door, but oftentimes when it's not a public place, um, we can click onto different screens and, and maybe listen to music when we're supposed to be listening to teachers and things like that. It is important that, that uh, parents keep an eye on what's happening as you can, uh, as you're home and you can do that uh, to keep an eye on, on those things. But even if you're not home, um, it is a good idea. We, we, we behave differently in all of our different places um, and our bedrooms oftentimes is where we sleep. And so even if for nothing else, um, just to make sure that there is a uh, a workspace that is for work, uh, we want to make sure to separate those places. Another reason for that um, is we don't want to have 
to, we don't want to sleep in our workplace. Uh, we want to make sure that when we are out of that workplace, that we're defining the roles of that space. Um, we can eat in our workspace because oftentimes that's what you do even as adults, right? Um, but when we, we want to make sure that those, there's a clear separation for those things so that that way, uh, when it is time to shut those things off, and there will be a time, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, when we need to make sure that that computer is off and we need to make sure that school is off and we are done for the day. Um, and make sure that that is over and done with and the stresses of that that stuff is put away. So the suggestion to have that in a certain place in, in the living room or uh, at the kitchen table, excuse me, where it can all be packed up and put away. Um, that's part of the many reasons why we want to make that suggestion. Um, interestingly enough, I had a conversation with a, a fellow coworker here at the school um, and they commented about how they sleep with their computer. Um, so rule number two um, is don't sleep with your computer. <laughs> um, make sure that it gets put away uh, and that, that, again, that you're having clear boundaries as to this is my work time and now my work time is done. And for whatever it's worth, for those of you that are working from home, um, make sure that you are uh, adhering to this advice as well. Um, it's important that you have that, that clear separation so that you can make sure that your boundaries are safe and clear. Get your students a school-issued Chromebook. If you don't have a school issue Chromebook, please get them one. Uh, you will find that uh, the, the learning opportunities uh, will be a little bit easier because the expectations that they are given through uh, the school work uh, will all be able to be accomplished through those, the school uh, computers. <clears throat> Another advantage to a school computer is that um, our teachers can make sure that they can communicate uh, with them. The other advantage is that at some point we hope that students will be coming back on campus and they will be required to have a school computer to be able to be on campus. So if they're not already on campus in some capacity, they will be. And we're hoping that uh, we can get everybody here in some capacity sooner than later uh, when everybody's safe and feels comfortable with that. Um, but that, that, that will be required at that point to get them a school issue Chromebook. The other part to that too, is that we do have some safety measures uh, in place uh, with those school issued Chromebooks. Uh, so by doing so, there's, there are some assurances that you can have um, that, that there is some safe uh, navigation of what's going on there. Um, this is a big one, uh, how to really tell if your students have turned things in. This is the big secret that your kids don't want you to know, so listen up carefully. They can click the turned in or submitted button and actually not have turned in or submitted anything. So if you're just going based off of that button um, and that says turned in or submitted, um, then you need to dig just a little bit deeper. Uh, one of the things that you can do is that each one of those assignments typically will be something that they complete as a Google Doc or a Word document or something like that, that they should be able to show you proof of that being done. Um, we're going to get to making sure that we're not too hard on our kids uh, a little bit later, but um, when we are looking to make sure that those things are done, that is a good way to do that. Communicating with the teacher is huge in this aspect. Uh, our teachers are are grading papers in a way that they've never done before. Um, oftentimes they're taking uh, pictures from people's phones and things like that. And they're trying to decipher all the different languages on all the different phones and things like that that are being written and, and the unclear pictures. So it's taking a little bit longer to make to get grades into grade books and things like that. And so as much that um, as, as much as we can uh, and again, we, this is we're talking about Google Classroom at this point. Thank you, Mrs. Barlow. Principal Barlow's on there. Uh, driving safely, I hope so, but she was able to get a comment in. So thank you. This is about uh, Google Classroom. As you communicate with the, with the teachers, um, if, if you are unsure whether a student submitted or something or something like that, please reach out to your teachers, uh, your students' teachers. They are more than will, willing and, and welcome to help you. Um, Infinite Campus is a good resource uh, for when grades are turned in. Um, so make sure that you are, are um, doing that as well. Um, Again, yeah, just because it's marked in and marked as turned in, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is. If you like some more real specific things on those things, each one of the teachers has a different turn in procedures. Uh, and so uh, each one of the teachers will be able to provide you some more specific things. But the big point that we wanna make sure is that just, just saying or hitting that button submitted on Google Classroom is not enough. Logged in for the win. This is a big thing. Um, we have some data now and we, we figured that this was gonna be the case, but when your students, can log in and turn on their camera. That is the best learning environment for them when they are not at school. Um, again, there are some, some shy students and some anxious students that aren't comfortable having their cameras on. Um, and that's something that 
please reach out to myself and Mr. Najibi and the school counselors about, uh, we would love to kind of help navigate those things. Um, but the reality is, and that the numbers are showing based off of our semester exams, that the students that were engaged in classes, that were attending online, and the kids that had their cameras on are the students that were scoring at a higher level than the students that, that weren't doing those things. That's not to say that you can't be successful in asynchronous uh, activities or asynchronous learning when you're not necessarily watching it live, that can be completely possible. There is a different level of accountability when your student is logged in uh, to class and able to ask questions of the teachers. And I think that the teacher accessibility is the biggest thing there. If your student cannot do those things, if they cannot log into class, again, the teacher accessibility is a huge piece of that. On Wednesdays, all of our teachers have staff time when they're available to do so. Okay, so I've got a couple questions that I'll address real quick before we keep moving on. Will the school get the vaccine test when it comes? Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what the question is there. Um, we are not requiring because we can't require anybody at the school to get vaccine, um, but we, we have many of our staff have uh, started that process. Um, and as a public school, um, it's probably something that we won't be able to require, but if, if that's what, the, um, what we are asked to do, then we will do that. Uh, when does the teacher reply to the email? It is an expectation um, that, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it is an expectation that the teachers are responding in a timely manner. Um, in the past, that's been a 24 hour period, but because everything has shifted to online, um, the online emails and the online uh, attendance and things like that has uh, taken a toll on our staff. And so we're just asking that you have a, a, some grace with them. If it's been a couple of days and you haven't heard from the teachers, then please just go ahead and reach out again and just say, just wondering if you had a chance to take a look at this. If it goes beyond that, you're welcome to reach out to school administration uh, to kind of help you with those things. But I have a feeling that our great teachers will be able to get back to you um, in, in a timely manner. So if you could be specific with your questions, I know that's very helpful for staff so that they can really just kind of get back into the nuts and bolts of what it is. So thank you so much. Um, Okay, that was not the direction I wanted to go. Here we go. So uh, some more things. Um, and, and, and I think that I might have talked a little bit about this before, but I'll, I'll just repeat it. Nobody knows how to COVID, so be patient with one another. Uh, I think I promised 17 times that I was going to say that, so I, that's only maybe four. So Mrs. Barlow, you have your hand raised if you want to jump in. I do. I just want to really address because I appreciate all of the families who are here joining us tonight and I am not driving. So I just want to clarify, I'm still sitting in my car. I affectionately call it my home office, but I do want to just share the communication part. We are, we are learning a lot as we go to, uh, in conversation with some of our teachers, this, um, Google that we use for our school email is fantastic in so many ways, but a lot of times teachers will see the email and they will open it and read it. And before they have a chance to reply, their attention will get pulled somewhere else or they'll get distracted by something. And when they are then in that situation, when they go back to their email, that email is then out of their, out of their sight to see as a visual reminder. So there's a, there's, they're trying to figure that out too. So when Mr. Hewlett talks about grace, it's, it's again, it's our policy and our procedure that we would make sure we can keep those lines of communication open. Um, but I do know in some situations that that's where emails get lost or that they don't get a chance to reply to them right away. And then they're inundated with so many other things that they're working on that that has created some of the breakdown in communication. Uh, just from the school side, we're working on that. And we are, again, realizing that that is something that is a learning curve uh, in, this, in this situation too. So as we're figuring out how to COVID a little bit better, that, that is one thing that we're talking to our staff about. And I know that's not the direction you wanted to go, so thanks for letting me say that, Mr. Hewlett. Great, no, I, I appreciate you being on, uh, Mrs. Barlow. Um, for a little bit of perspective, uh, we've, we've had, in, in addition to starting a new school this year in the middle of uh, COVID-19 and having a new administration team and things like that, this is also our year to be observed by uh, a couple of different other um, audits and things like that that we have to do as a public school. And we're right in the middle of one of those too. So uh, it's been a long couple of days. So I appreciate Principal Barlow being on here and, and joining us in these late hours. So um, one of the questions in the chat is, can the teacher let the class know that the students need to turn the cameras on? Um, so one of the things that we have to be very careful with, uh, we had a, and I, I think it's okay to share, if I don't share the the name and things like that. We had a student that was saying that they're very uncomfortable with, with turning their camera on. So when we had a conversation, it was because uh, they have little siblings and they are running around the house, you know, like little siblings often do in diapers and 
uh, things like that. And so they were really uncomfortable with having the camera on. And so in those situations, we really can't, and we wanna be careful not to require that of students um, because, and, and we had another situation where a student uh, was embarrassed by, by when they turned their camera on and their room wasn't clean and things like that. So it's something we have to be careful with. It's a general assumption that if they are in class, that the camera can be on. Um, and so if, you're, if that's something that you are comfortable with, if you can just pass that on to your student and just let them know that when they are attending class virtually, um, to have their cameras on, uh, that would be great. So hopefully that answers that, that, that question comment. Um, so let's go just a little bit in, into a little bit different directions. So we talked about the, you know, some specific things about homework and things like that. Um, the next kind of, you know, area that I'd like to, to head into as we continue down this journey of, of nobody knows how to COVID um, is the kind of social emotional piece of things. Um, the next most important thing uh, on top of nobody knows how to COVID uh, is this next point, and that is talk to your kids uh, and then talk to your kids and then talk to your kids um, and probably talk to them a little bit more. Um, and as much as they're probably not going to talk back to you, especially the older they get, uh, the less that they have a tendency to talk, um, it is important that they are comfortable and feel comfortable that those lines of communication are open. Um, and we'll talk about this in just a little bit, but the reality is, is that 100% of our kids have been uncomfortable in the last year by something that's happened in COVID, uh, by something in the media, they are worried and they're scared. Um, and so it's important that we understand that we need to keep those lines of communication open. Um, oftentimes our kids can be there and suffering in silence and we have no idea. Um, and, and sometimes they don't wanna to talk to you even when you wanna to talk to them. So I recognize that uh, as, a, as a parent of an 11, of a 12 year old son uh, who still likes to talk, in fact, he talks all the time. Um, it, it's, it's probably, I'm probably not the, the foremost authority on this, except for the fact that I've been doing this for a couple of years and a couple thousand kids have come through the school. And so uh, there is some experience there with, uh, you know, making sure that they know uh, that there's a safe place there. Before I move on, it looks like there's just a couple more questions here. Do you have an app such as Class Dojo for parents to connect with the teacher? Um, that's a great question. Uh, we, we don't have anything like that set up as, it, as a, an entire school. Um, the biggest and best way would be right through the um, right through our, our Gmail accounts. Um, so it's the uh, first initial last name of the of the staff member and then at amplus.org. Um, but that's something that I am going to take note of and, and see if that's something a direction that we're heading for in the future. Um, I know we're looking at Blackboard and I don't know at, which is a, a communication uh, form form of way of communicating uh, through the district. And so um, I don't know if that's something that uh, Mrs. Barlow, did you want to address that real quick? Yeah, Ms. I just want to clarify. It's the first initial last name of the teacher at amplus.academy. Oh, yeah. um, dot org. But the um, the teachers have been given the opportunity uh, to to bring those types of um, communications to their supervising administrators. What they've found is that, again, there's so much that they're already managing that it's one additional uh, task that is actually more complicated things um, while they're in the middle of doing hybrid. I imagine that that um, once we are back in person all the time that those communication uh, portals will be more open um, on a grade level or a school level. But right now we're not mandating that they use any of those apps. We know they're fantastic. We love them for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but out of conserving the energy of the teachers, it's a lot for them to do hybrid, but to keep up in those other ways is, is in some cases a little bit more common. It hasn't been uh, a system that we've put into place. Perfect, thank you. Uh, another question in the chat here before we move on is, will third grade have homework or any other grade gets it? So um, the the goal for our learning this year and and you know, as that as we move forward and, and learn things each and every year, um, is that during the class time we want the majority of the work to be done. Um, there is there are some advantages to homework and things that will be assigned outside of school hours. Uh, but the reality is is that with the demands of our time and the demands of our parents' time, especially during this COVID season, uh, we we feel it's very important to make sure we get as much of the homework done and the work for school done during school hours. Ideally, uh, they wouldn't have too much homework that would, they would do outside of school hours if they're working diligently in class. For secondary students, there's about a 51 minute period. And in that time, should be about a 15 to 20 minute lesson. 
uh, and then a significant amount of independent work time uh, where teachers can have some individual work time with, with students. Um, again, that's one of those advantages to being able to be part of that uh, if you are logging on to those things. So hopefully that answers the question homework. The next big point uh, that I'd like to bring up is, is shifting expectations. Uh, um, we are an academically rigorous school and we have no intentions of changing and not becoming an academically rigorous school. The expectation that we have is that we want to prepare students to attend and be successful after high school, um, attend colleges, universities, uh, trade schools, and have an, a, a post-secondary education plan. Uh, we want them to make sure that they are successful in any way that we can possibly make sure that they're successful. In doing so, we have really high expectations for them. However, we are in the midst of a global pandemic when suicide and suicide ideation is at its peak, when desperation and loneliness is at its peak. And the reality is, is that some of that, those expectations are going to have to be shifted on an individual basis. Again, this is talking holistically. You know your kid and you know your family better than, than I do, especially since I'm speaking to about 50 people right now um, and anybody else that watches this later. Um, but there is a need to shift some expectations, whereas in the past, we only demanded A's in our family. Um, maybe we're going to shift that to say, maybe we're going to demand A effort, uh, which doesn't necessarily always result in an A. Uh, we have shifted our expectations this year and have increased the rigor of some of our programs, uh, whereas in the past, some students were able to get really good grades. And now, because of the, the rigorous program that we have, uh, they're not achieving at the same level that where they have achieved in the past. It's important, that, again, that you have open lines of communication uh, with staff members and, and our teachers. Uh, who are just amazing and, and willing to help with those things um, to help you kind of um, adjust or, or have appropriate expectations for your student. If they're reading at a third grade level and they're in fifth grade, then having them get an A in their reading class probably is, is going to be a, a very difficult thing for them to attain. And we can tell those things because we've taken the steps to make sure that we are having some uh, testing and things like that to make sure that we can kind of scientifically look at those things. Um, instead of just some of the arbitrary things that have been done in the past. So a shift in expectations is, is enormous and, and it's gonna be um, vital to the success of your family and student at this time. Enforce movement breaks. Um, as we all know, uh, at home, at, at work, uh, sometimes you just need to get up and step away from the computer. Um, one of those shift in expectations, I think, uh, you know, as an adult, we can oftentimes sit and power through eight hours at a computer. The reality is that that's not good for developing brains. And unless our students are 25 or older, their brains are still developing. Um, the human brain doesn't stop its full development and full growth until about the age of 25. Um, and so with all of our kids that are in school, their brains are, are literally still growing. They're literally still developing. Um, and as such, part of the, one of the things that's required for that growth to happen is movement. Um, one of the reasons why we have recess and why we have, um, you know, breaks for students to get up and walk around is to, to change the blood flow and, the, and to their brains and things like that. If you are home and can enforce those movement breaks, please make sure you do so. Uh, for our secondary classes, that means that about every 51 minutes that they should be getting up and walking around. For our elementary classes, I think it's about the same. Our schedule is posted on our website so you can see exactly when it is that they have those times broken out. Um, make sure that they're taking that time. If it's a lunchtime, make sure they're eating their lunch, a healthy lunch. I know that that sounds rudimentary and you're probably thinking, why am I spending all this time coming here listening to stuff that I already know? Um, but sometimes we forget that those things are super important. Um, so enforce those movement breaks at home. Decrease post-school screen time. Um, screen fatigue is a real thing. And for anybody who has sat in front of three computer screens for any significant time at all, you can uh, definitely uh, say that, that it is a real thing. Um, the reality is, is that we wanna make sure that while we have our kids on these computers, we understand it's a necessary evil at this time. But children's brains and the wiring in our brains and the, the chemical responses in our brains can be altered by the amount of time that we have and the things that we do on our screen time. Um, and so having a, a healthy uh, amount of screen time is necessary. And again, it's a necessary evil at this time with the schools, um, but making sure that we have a time when those things get turned off um, and that we have some, um, some real uh, interaction with one another. 
Um, I'd like to kind of just shift for the last little bit of our presentation. I've invited one of our secondary students to join us. Uh, Riley has, has graciously decided to join us today. Uh, yesterday, I was, I was putting the final touches on, on this presentation, and he just happened to walk by with one of his friends, and I thought, you know, what a great opportunity that I have now that we have students back on campus uh, to maybe just have a conversation with one of these creatures that we're talking about, these students that are so amazing. Um, and as we were going through it, I, I, his answers were so amazing. In fact, I can show you that I took a, an entire page of notes, um, and, and I thought to myself, why am I going to regurgitate what he said and just have him tell you himself? Uh, from his perspective as a student, um, how things are going. So, um, Riley, uh, unmute and then uh, let's do a sound check real quick and then we'll go All through right. these questions, okay? All right. Can y'all hear me? Yes, we're good to go. Great. Okay, so, Riley, what do teenagers want parents to know and understand? What do students want parents to know and understand? Um, I feel like most students really want to know that, that somebody's there for them. I feel like for the most part, uh, knowing that somebody's there for, for them can help them get over certain humps. Because if you feel like, oh, I'm worthless and nobody's going to care about me when you're trying to overcome this really brand new way of doing it, which is really stressful, uh, knowing that somebody's there for you and, and, and cares about you can really, really help them out. Awesome. Um, so talk about the stress, Riley. Let's talk a little bit yeah. about the stress. What stresses you out? Uh, personally... General. So let's let's talk let's talk about coronavirus. What stresses you out in the last yeah. year since March fifteenth? Um, well, I know I know first and foremost I've been worried about people close to me, family, friends, uh, if they're safe. Uh, but I've also worried about my future and, and things like that. And I know a lot of other people have too, because uh, I know specific certain people who who did really well, like were really like super good students before before we got uh, stuck in our side of our houses. Uh, so who when uh, we got forced to do online, their grades plummeted and, and it was really sad. So I know a lot of people are worrying about their futures and, and just kind of the weight of everything. It, it, it's really stressful, you know? Awesome. So you brought up two things. I want to get into those just a little yeah. bit. Let's go with safety first. What, what are your safety concerns? For, what are your friends' safety concerns at this point? Well, well, for me, I have friends who have older parents or live with grandparents and I, and I don't want to get them sick, you know? And, and, and because that could that could be really traumatic for them and, and just knowing that my friends uh could lose someone really close to them because of because their parents or, or guardians are really vulnerable is really stressful and i know and i know it's stressful for a lot of people and it's stressful for those people who have those more vulnerable guardians um it's a great perspective i think that oftentimes uh we as adults think hey it's not that big of a deal. Those kids aren't even getting sick, right? So why are we worried about let's open the schools, right? No masks, exactly. do the thing, right? Um, and and a lot of the 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 thought that our students are having, and um, you know, there are kids that are like, yeah, I feel fine coming back, but I don't want to come back because if I get sick and take it home to my, you know, my my parent who has asthma or something like that, yeah. I might not make it. Uh, what are the safety concerns do you have? Like like for me personally, just in general, yeah. I mean, when we talked yesterday, you talked a lot about. Uh, you know, the loneliness and, and oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. friends that have some suicidal ideation. Um, yeah, being stuck inside is really bad for kids' mental health. Um, it, 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 in, in, like specifically, like being stuck inside really, really promotes that whole feeling of I, I, uh, isolation. And that really drives depression and, and suicide. And so being able to socialize uh, really helps out with that, like talking to their friends or just anybody in general. Uh, so that's 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 something else I have written down. Uh, talking to people is just really helpful. Knowing that there's still people existent and that they're not kind of stuck in being stuck inside that little room is really really bad for mental health. And that's that's another really important thing that being stuck inside constantly is it's it's just not going to end well. And yeah. Okay, so we're gonna to get to socialization here in just a second, but the other point that you put, touched on before we went down mm -hmm. that, that way was the future, being afraid and, and fearful of your future. Can you expound upon that a little bit? We talked about academics yesterday, we talked about different things like that. So what do you mean by kids being concerned about their future? Well, uh, lots of kids have plans for the future. Like I wanna to go to this college and I needed to get this kind of GPA to get into that college, uh, but then, when they're not able to perform as well as they, they, they can uh, and their grades start to suffer because of it, 
uh, it gets them really worried about going to college. And I'm, I'm one of those people. I've really been worried about um, being able to just get into a college I wanted to go to. Um, and for certain people, that's just not even a possibility anymore. So I know lots of people are really worried about future success academically and otherwise in those certain aspects. Yeah. Great. No, that's a great perspective. I think that um, oftentimes we just kind of, you know, we, we, we think that as, as the adults, we're like, okay, just work harder, right? And you can yeah. figure it out and just push, push through those things. So uh, thank you for that perspective. Um, let's get into the socialization thing. Um, yeah. You know, this, we're bored at home, right? You're mm -hmm. bored at home. So what are, what are some things that you can uh, suggest outside yeah. of video games, right? Because I just told everybody yes. about video games, but I will, let me just take a, a left turn and, and parallel park here for just a second. Um, I, I, today's video games are not the video games of yesteryear. Um, oftentimes kids are utilizing their gaming uh, for socialization. So yeah. a healthy dose of, of socialization through those computers um, I'm not going to to completely say no to that. So you know your your child and you know your kids uh, better than I do. I, I don't want to completely say that that's an absolute no, um, but it is something to be careful with. Um, yeah. But in having conversations with you yesterday, Riley, you brought up a great great perspective about that and how uh, video games can kind of be an escape. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Uh, well, it's just nice to have something to turn your brain off to because the world is just so noisy, and being overwhelmed with all that noise is overwhelming. Um, and just being able to turn your brain off and play video games, it's just so refreshing and so freeing. Uh, and a lot of kids really, really need that um, just to turn their brains off for enough time. Um, is there too much video gaming? Is there, is there a point where there's too much, in your opinion? I would say when it's starting to encroach on the things you actually need to get done. Okay. Like, 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 I can, I, I, <laughs> like, if you do need to do school, Obviously, you can't just spend your whole day playing video <laughs> games. Um, so if, 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 if the video game playing starts to encroach um, on their schoolwork and the things they actually need to get done, I, I would say maybe draw the line there. Um, but right. video game, and obviously if they're spending like nine hours a day on it, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe pull, pull <laughs> bring in the reins. <laughs> All um, right, good. Mm -hmm. But no, uh, I'd say a little bit of video gaming or hours of video gaming is not harmful okay. if that makes sense okay especially if they're playing with their friends on the online that's that's really good for mental health okay great okay so let's talk about non-screen time uh oh, yes. non non-video gaming non-tv watching non-youtube watching non-instagram yeah. non-facebook gram whatever what are some other things to overcome boredom what what are some other suggestions that you have for all these parents that are wondering how do I help my kids not be bored? Well, that's a, that's a tougher decision because <laughs> going outside is a, uh, it's a, it's a, it's a strange thing. And that's really dependent on how comfortable you are with kids going outside. Um, if it were my, my kids, outside, Riley, do you mean hanging out with their friends or do you mean literally going out? To I mean, I mean, hanging out with friends. Okay. That means something different to us old people. So I wanted to just translate what that meant for all of us. Yeah. Sorry. All the boomers uh, here. Okay. Um, no, yeah, so it, that's that's solely a, a dependent thing if you want your kids hanging out with friends or not. Uh, but I'd say like trying to get them out of the house might work like 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 the way it used to be. Like <laughs> go play in the street with for a bit. Uh, riding bikes, I, I've I've gotten into bike riding, just biking around nearby spots. That's a really good thing that you can just do by yourself. Uh, that's promoting really good fitness too, which can improve upon mental health. And so yeah, outside time is really good. Just sitting at, maybe just even sitting outside. I, I remember for a while I would do my classes outside so I could breathe actual air. <laughs> well, good. That's great. Uh, one of the things that you said one of your friends did was took up baking, right? And you had yeah. lots of cookie deliveries? Yeah. Oh, I've been eating good for a while. <laughs> I love, that's my favorite thing. <laughs> good deal. <laughs> Uh, I think a big point uh, for, for parents uh, is to tap in. And again, if you're having these communications, yeah. communicating and doing your best to communicate with your kids, um, to, to try to figure out something that, that, that fulfills them. Um, it could be sports. It could be whatever. Um, but sometimes you have to be tricky about this with parents. Uh, sometimes getting them out of the house means telling them to go get the mail for you, right? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's, it's a chore that, that takes them outside, like taking the trash out. 
Um, and, and sometimes uh, that just, just seeing the sunshine and, and making sure that they're not vampires is helpful, helps for people. So um, we kind of went through this. Uh, Riley, what do you think, what percentage of kids uh, and your friends would you say um, would answer that they were at some point during the last you know, year not okay? Uh, 200%. <laughs> uh, every single one of my friends has continuously told me how nervous this whole thing was and how stressful it is. And, and I have no doubt that every kid is feeling this way. Okay, great. All right, hang out for just a minute. I, uh, from our conversation yesterday, I made some bullet points that we're going to go over. Um, oh, yeah. I think there's a question in the chat that I'll get to at the end of our presentation. So be patient with me if you could. Um, and then, uh, and then we'll kind of wrap things up. So let's just quickly go through this. So once again, uh, Riley, did you know how to COVID before COVID? Definitely not. Okay. Uh, good. We'll make sure that you weren't, uh, maybe you were clairvoyant or something like that. So. Well, I mean, I was a masked hipster. I, I wore <laughs> masks in January uh, and then everybody didn't. So I, I was ahead of the trend there. So you, you are the reason we're all wearing masks. I, I will send all the complaints to you, buddy. Um, okay, so uh, promote healthy coping. Um, so other healthy coping mechanisms uh, from the adult perspective, um, oddly enough, coloring, um, getting coloring books. There are adult coloring books. There are paint by number books. Um, just shutting your mind off and doing those kinds of things, that's a healthy one. Um, writing and typing um, are, are good ways. Journaling um, and uh, free writing. Free writing is where you just kind of put all the thoughts in your brain and just throw it out there. So um, those are different ways. Um, talking, hanging out with friends, walking, physical activity, activity, physical exercise, hiking, jogging, those kinds of things, stuff that gets your blood flowing. Um, those are all uh, healthy coping mechanisms. Um, crying. Riley mentioned yesterday, crying. Talk to me about crying, Riley. Uh, crying is one of my favorite pastimes. <laughs> Just letting it all out is so nice. And it, you can cry with your parents or you can just cry alone. And it, it's so nice because it's something you can do social distant. Um, but no, just letting it all out is, I think, one of the best things. Uh, just being able to stop caring and just kind of for just a brief moment, just pretend like your problems are just gone and just letting it out. So, yeah. Crying is really, really good. <laughs> That's really good. good. And, and just for parent perspective, if uh, if the crying turn, uh, occasionally turns into crying all the time and then we're not happy at all, um, then make sure and reach out to, to myself or a professional to kind of talk about those things. But it is healthy to kind of let your emotions, again, uh, teenagers, especially in, in uh, tweens and even our younger kids, um, we're dealing with a lot of hormones and a lot of stuff going on in addition to what's happening. Um, and so, you know, a healthy... A healthy cry is, is not is not necessarily a bad thing. Overcome boredom, we talked about that. Um, talking, uh, talking is a big, huge thing. So encourage talk, uh, kids to talk to their friends. Um, encourage them to talk to their friends if they're not feeling well and if they are feeling well and being a, a safe place for friends to come to talk to. Um, encourage your kids that if, you're, if their friends are having a hard time uh, to, to reach out to, uh, to myself or a trusted adult, a trusted adult, a counselor, um, a parent. Um, kids need to have, and you need to have a conversation with your students and your ch child to give them the, the words to, to tell their friends if, they're, if their friends are struggling. If they are struggling beyond that, which, which a, a, another kid can help with, um, they need to make sure that they're reaching out. Uh, there are hotlines and Google is amazing for all the things. So um, making sure that, that those communications and those conversations that the kids don't feel responsible for their friend's happiness. Um, but they can be there for each other. Talk to teachers, talk to a member of our student support team, which you, you have all that information. Um, talk with anybody. I, I think it's important to remember that physical distance does not equal social distance or vice versa. We talk a lot about social distancing and I think that that means, uh, that has come to me that we needed to be separated from one another. And the reality is, and I'm gonna be really close to the camera on this, as the person who is in charge of knowing all the regulations and understanding the regulations at the school for our COVID stuff uh, from the CDC and the Southern Nevada Health District, the requirement is face masks and six feet of distance. Outside of six feet and with face masks on, um, being together can be safe. And when we're washing our hands and doing things like that. So we can be physically distanced um, 
but we don't necessarily have to be socially distanced. And I hope that you can understand the, the difference there. Um, and as you feel comfortable, I don't wanna be preachy and tell you how you should feel, but as you feel comfortable, um, please offer opportunities for your kids to be in the same room as somebody. We had a student that didn't like school at all uh, in years past, and they begged their parents not to make them come to school. Um, and six minutes after the first day of school, after hybrid learning happened, they sent an email home to their parent begging them to get them to be able to come to school more. Um, they realized uh, how good it feels to be around people. We have staff members who went months without human contact other than this. Um, and they've, they've, they've talked to us about how difficult that has been on them. So um, physical, social distance doesn't necessarily have to mean physical distance. Be patient, be loving, be kind, be patient, be patient. Nobody knows how to COVID. We've never done this before. How many up to? At least eight, Riley? Are you keeping track? Yeah. Okay, I've got nine more in the next three minutes. So, um, no, just kidding. Uh, kids are scared and worried. Uh, Riley did a great job at, at Kelly and helping see that perspective a little bit. Um, as such, uh, limit media accessibility. Um, if we watch the news, it's a lot of doom and gloom. And the reality is, is that we can find what we're looking for. If we're looking to be depressed and sad, um, that's very, very easy to find these days. Excuse me. Um, so, so limit the, the messaging on media and social media. Social media in and of itself uh, is going to be a whole other parent university. So uh, <laughs> sign up for that one when we get to that one. But uh, social media can be an amazing opportunity for kids to have um, social connectedness, but it can also be a tool um, of divisiveness and isolation and danger for our kids. So know what your kids are doing online. Uh, know their, um, their social media um, handles, their platforms, whatever it is that, that you want to, to call it. Uh, make sure you know what they're doing um, and, and, make, and making sure that, that those things are appropriate and safe for them. Understand and classify the things that you can control and that which you cannot control. I think this is a big thing that when uh, kids without the, the ability of some maturity and the use of their entire brain, uh, like we talked about before, um, without those things, they can't understand that they can't control certain things. And so having conversations with your kids, and again, that list of things you can't control is really, really big when you're seven years old. Um, and it's a little bit smaller as you get older, but the reality is, is that some of these things are completely out of all of our control. And so naming the things that we can't control um, is important. Um, and controlling the things that we can is important. And, and those things are important for every single one of us. Um, so, Riley, did you have any, any closing thoughts? You don't have to necessarily leave, but uh, do you have anything that, that I missed that we should have gone over? Um, I don't know. I, I really just, I, I just be there for your kids. And I feel like that's one of the most important things. That's another thing you should probably take home. Um, just being there, it, it helps a ton. And even just saying like, hey, I'm here. Or just and just like regularly check regularly checking in will also help. Like just the kid knowing your kid knowing that someone is there for them and won't judge them for how they're feeling. It, it's really it does it, it does so much to help. It really kind of takes a huge load off of our of our shoulders. I feel like that's that's one of the more important things. So awesome, yeah. Riley. You're a number one. Uh, you're doing a great job. Uh, your your family should be proud. Let me ask you this question. This is the last one I'm gonna ask you. Have there been a time where your, your family members or myself or somebody has asked you to talk about things and that you didn't talk to them? Like, like you asked me about something that was going on and I was just like, no. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I try to always talk about <laughs> things that are going on with me, uh, but sometimes I just feel like I should keep it to myself, but no, no, definitely check in. That keeping that in is not healthy. My my point being, and thank you, Riley, for your candid answer. My point is, is that um, there are going to be times as parents that you're going to you're going to talk to your kids, and they're not going to want to talk. Um, but I think that what is most important from Riley's perspective, what he shared with me, um, is that at the end of the day, um, to know that you're available and you're there for those things um, is really important. So. Um, okay, so we're going to wrap up here. One of the great questions that we had uh, in the in the chat here before I completely close everything up is if the students take a vaccine test, will they get to choose to wear a mask? And at this point, the answer to that question is no. 
Um, the directives from our governor, from the CDC, from the Southern Nevada Health District are all one in one in one. Nobody's diverting from this at this point. Um, masks will be a requirement for the immediate future. Um, and so regardless of whether, uh, you know, we have antibodies and vaccines and things like that, as of right now, until that changes, we'll let you know, but that's, that is going to be the continued and ongoing requirement uh, for, for all the good and all the bad and everything like that. So, um, okay, so let's just wrap things up. Um, love your kids, uh, meet them where they're at. Um, I, I, health and mental health conquers all, including school. Um, so if it comes down to getting that homework assignment done or having a, a, a breakdown and having a crying fit, um, let's let the homework sit for a little bit because uh, we can always figure that out later. Um, but to heal the scars of, of the emotions of what's happening right now uh, could take a lifetime. Um, and, and homework can be made up and, and excused and things like that. So um, love your kids enough to know that there are times to worry about school and there are times to not worry about school. Um, and, and from somebody who was really worried about that and, and uh, really worried about making sure my son can, can have scholarships and things like that someday, um, we need to make sure that, that as parents, we are doing our best to love our kids. Um, we've talked about a lot of great things, but the reality is, is there's no magic pill that fits everybody and no magic solution that fits every single person. I wish that I could um, be, the, be the brilliant mind that figures out how to help kids in their social emotional health and their social emotional well-being but the reality is is that every kid and every circumstance is different and so just keep trying uh, keep plugging away and know that we are here as a school to help to support and love you through that um, we're here to help and love and support your kids through that um, our staff i will say with any shortcomings that any of us might have uh, one of the underlying themes of every single person that i work with and that we work with at this school is here because they love kids they love your kids. They love um, making sure that your kids are safe and well. Um, and so there might be times where we forget that because of not getting an email back when we want to or things like that. But the reality is, is that people didn't sign up to be teachers and go to school for four years to work with kids uh, to be mean to kids. And so um, if that's for perspective, then we can work on that. But we love your kids and we want you all to be better. Take your time and love everybody. Um, if I didn't mention it, uh, nobody knows how to COVID, and we're thankful for those of you that have been um, part of this journey with us and been patient with us. We would love to hear from you. If there's something else that we can do to support you, please reach out. Um, if there are any further questions, uh, Mrs. Barlow, do you have anything you want to wrap up with? No, I'm just grateful for this opportunity. I look forward to, uh, to more of these classes, Mr. Hewlett. Thank you, and thank you, uh, your entire team. Uh, for their input and their expertise. We're just really, really fortunate to be at Amplus. Okay, looks like we don't have any more questions in the chat. So thank you everybody for being part of this. Our next, uh, we're gonna try to do this monthly. So assuming that uh, nothing cra crazy happens between now and, and next month, uh, we'll, we're gonna have this uh, towards the end of the next month again. Um, and, and we're looking at uh, some, different, uh, some different topics like you saw at the beginning. So. Uh, we'll get that information out to you in the next couple weeks. Thank you again for being part of this. Take care, everybody. Have a great night. Thank you, Riley. You're my hero. I think a lot of people want you to date their child now, so. <laughs>